Shalom, shalom. <laughs> it's Kurt and Christy Landry. We're shalom. going to talk to you about battling in the opposite spirit today. <laughs> And so this should be a real powerful time because we're actually going to do it. So we're not just going to teach it. You're actually going to experience it. So if you need peace and if you need direction and you want to be able to get peace and direction and stop the confusion in the United States of America, this is how we do it. And so what you sow into with your prayers is what you'll get back in your house. So we're going to go and... and uh, we're in the season of Tishbiav. People ask, well, what's Tishbiav? Tishbiav is the 9th of Av, which is actually July 29th through the 30th. But in Jewish tradition, uh, we actually fast and pray the three weeks, weeks prior to that. And, and historically during the Tishbiav, I taught on it the other day, all this horrible stuff happens. And it's kind of a demonic calendar. And so, you know, it starts with the, in um, 1312 BC, when uh, the children of Israel, they go out and they spy out the land and they come with a bad report. When do they give the bad report? Tishbiav, the ninth of Av. The destruction of the first temple, ninth of Av. Destruction of the second temple, the same day, the ninth of Av. And it goes on. When the Crusaders started, the ninth of Av. When the expulsion of the Jews from England, the ninth of Av. The Inquisitions in Spain and Portugal, ninth of Av. World War I starts, the ninth of Av. And it just goes on and on. Even down to the expulsion of Jewish people from Gush Katif, the Gaza Strip, and uh, I think it was 2005, if I remember right, you and I were there. It was horrible. Let's see, when is that? Yeah, 2005. The ninth of Av. So there's something about this season. And so uh, we're going to battle in the opposite spirit. And we're going to cancel the confusion, the destruction, and all the attacks that come against your family. So if you want to uh, be a part of that, go ahead and hit that comment saying, my family is in. Say, my family is in. We agree. Because you need to come in agreement with these prayers. And you need to uh, understand a little bit about what do we do by meaning to battle in the opposite spirit? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take our words and our seed today, our words and our seed, and we're going to line it with God, and we're going to break the assignment of death off your family, off your finances, and off your health, and off this nation in Yeshua's name. Amen? Amen. So, um, first of all, I'm going to start with Psalm 125, Psalm 125 and uh, we're going to just bring that into the forefront on this Thursday evening here. The scripture says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abide forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds the people from this time forth and forevermore. So there's something important about not just Jerusalem, but the mountains surrounding Jerusalem. And so right now we're in this great controversy over those mountains. It's called, they're called Judea and Samaria. So you've got Judea and Samaria and, and, and people are battling over this. And right now Netanyahu is wanting to annex Judea, Judea and Samaria into the nation of Israel. All of that's been put on hold right now because of the COVID-19. And so uh, this is an opportunity for Israel. If Israel is going to annex and if they'll do it properly with a complete annexation and not just 30%, if they can get that support, realistically, the only chance of that happening that I see in the short term future is between now and November when Donald Trump is still in office because Donald Trump is very much uh, pro-Israel and he understands the importance of the high places. He, he gets the concept that these mountains that surround Jerusalem, not just recognizing Jerusalem, but the mountains that surround it, even going out as far as the Golan Heights, okay? And so why is that important to us? But verse three says this, if we will recognize God's mountains, look what he does. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous reach out their hands in iniquity. Well, I think right now we need to recognize the mountains. Remember, we're battling in the opposite spirit. 
I think we need to surround the mountains of Israel, recognize the covenant that God made with Abraham and the legal right to the Jewish people to these mountains, not just the Jerusalem as the undivided capital, but the existing mountains that surround so that the scepter of wickedness will be removed off the land so the people won't strive. So if we sow into that in prayer and with our seed, then we can legally in the courts of heaven claim for America, we need these scepters of wickedness that are attacking and wanting to destroy the United States of America. So this is the strategy. And verse four says in Psalm 25, do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. As for as much as turn aside from their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them in a way with the workers, uh, lead us away from the workers of iniquity, peace be upon Israel. So it's interesting that, that God is saying, if we will come in agreement with God's plan for the mountains surrounding Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the Golan Heights, all those mountains, if we will come in agreement with what God says, he will remove the scepter of wickedness from our land. Now, I wanna back this up with multiple scriptures. And if we go into Psalm 122, uh, and uh, um, we've got a little bit of time here, so I'm just gonna read Psalm 122. Start verse one. It says this, and I love this because this is our testimony. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem has built a city that is compact together. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to a testimony of the Lord, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, for the thrones are set there for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. So here's the key is, the Lord is saying, I will judge you, nations, based off how you interact with Jerusalem. So now it's not just the mountains, it's the city of Jerusalem. He says, how you interact with Jerusalem, whether you bless it or curse it, then this is gonna be the choice of how I interact with your land. So we understand that. I mean, that's good, that's clear. So now listen to this. This is not a request from the Lord. This is a command. In order to keep the nations blessed, he says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. So the commanded bless the command is pray for Jerusalem, and then the blessing is may they prosper who love you. I think right now the United States, I think your house, my house, our ministry, your ministry, your businesses all need to be blessed of the Lord with protection and favor. And then he says, if you'll pray for the peace of Jerusalem, if your heart and your actions and your deeds are right with my city, Jerusalem, you'll have peace within your walls. See, this is a key for the United States of America to have peace within its walls. That's why we want a president and an administration that is pro-Israel, pro-Jerusalem, because we need this alignment blessing from God. Saved or unsaved, Jew or Gentile, we need this blessing and we're gonna activate it today, okay? Then it says, prosperity will be within your palaces. And for the sake of my brethren and companions, I will now say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. So that means I will seek your good. I will do something good. So it's amazing this week that we brought new shoes for all the Holocaust survivors, like almost 500 pairs of shoes. And we got new mattresses to our safe house for our girls and so many different things in Jerusalem. So, so the blessings are there, the, the alignment is there, but the United States of America, we need to understand that the United States of America has been, been really founded to be a banner. And, and when I say that is, I believe with all my heart that the United States of America was created to stand with Israel and also to preach the gospel, to be a, a nation, a superpower for the gospel, but also called to stand with the nation of Israel. 
And, and you read about this in Isaiah 11 and 10. It says that in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse who stand as a banner to the people. For the Gentiles shall seek him and his resting place shall be glorious. So obviously, this is speaking about Yeshua being born and he was born in Judea. He was born in Bethlehem. But we also understand that that Jerusalem and Israel becomes this banner for the Gentiles to find rest as well. As well. Why? Obviously because of Calvary, Jesus was crucified there. And uh, that's where our salvation comes from, the Jewish Messiah, Yeshua. But then it says, it shall come to pass in that day, speaking of the days we're in, that the Lord shall set his hand again a second time. And this obviously started now with uh, 1948, Israel becomes a state suddenly in a day, June 7th, 1967, Jerusalem is again under Jewish control. And, and, and we see uh, literally almost 2 million <coughs> Jews from the nations returning back, making Aliyah and Israel being in its own way uh, a leading nation in that region and one of the top leading nations in the world. So the Lord has fulfilled his promise. So he has put his hand upon them a second time. And obviously you have two Jews here that believe in Yeshua as Messiah. And there's many of us. And so he has put his hand upon us a second time. But then what he says is this. He says, I will set up a banner for the nations and I will assemble the outcasts of Israel and I will gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And, uh, and it says there that Ephraim, a, a type of Gentile, shall, uh, well, the envy of the Gentiles shall depart, Ephraim, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. So what is he talking about? He's talking about there will be a day when one new man, that's who you are, that's who we are. We are Jews and Gentiles. We are not envious and jealous of each other. We are jealous for our God. We are jealous for his word. We are in unity as one new man from the two. Why? Because Jesus came, thus he made peace. And, and so that's who we are today. But <clears throat> I wanna talk to you about this very important time because we're in Tishbiah 5780, 2020. And what is the Lord doing? What is the strategy to be able to pray for the peace of not only Jerusalem and Israel, but how do we release peace in the United States of America? Well, the Lord's given me a strategy, and so we're gonna walk in that tonight. And that is out of Isaiah 45. Of course, many of us believe, I believe that uh, Donald Trump walks in an anointing of Osiris. And so this is a powerful scripture. Now I wanna share with you when I first heard this scripture. I first heard this scripture, it was in the early 90s. I was in Israel and a prophet from Switzerland and a teacher, uh, his name was Shel Sherberg. And uh, he brought forth this scripture. And, and when he brought forth the scripture, he, he was saying that uh, there's very few times in the Bible where God himself actually speaks to people. And uh, what he was saying is that when God himself speaks, it's super holy unto the Lord. So the fulfillment and the fulfilling of Bible prophecy is super holy unto the Lord. And, and so what he means by that is, is, is the scripture we just read was spoken by a psalmist. And the scripture we're reading is, is spoken by the prophet Isaiah. But listen to this. This is when God speaks to all the nations of the earth over all the other gods, you know, over, over Islam and over Buddha and, and all the other gods that, that are being worshiped by man. And God is disruptive on the scene. He disrupts the scene and he says, now wait a minute. He says in Isaiah 45 and 20, he said, <coughs> he didn't cough because... <laughs> got your attention. Yeah, he... <laughs> He's not battling the COVID. <laughs> so anyway, um, so that was terrible. Sorry, forgive me. So anyway, uh, so in Isaiah 20, I mean, Isaiah 45 and 20, he says this, and that's what we're going to do right now. He says this, assemble yourself and come draw near together, you who have escaped from the nations. 
they have no knowledge who carry the wooden the wood of their carved images and pray to God's little g that cannot save. So that's what we're battling today. This Antifa and all these different organizations, they're so angry, they're pulling down images, they're pulling down statues, they're attacking these images and the very images that they have cannot save them. It's really a, a, a frustration of inner rage because they're really, ultimately, they may not know it. They think they're mad at this people group or that, but realistically, they're mad at God. They are angry at God because why? What they believed in has failed. They're not, they're not humble enough to say that it has failed. So instead it says, let's burn down these buildings, let's riot, let's hurt these people and do all this angry stuff because realistically, they're mad at their God that hasn't, has not done what they wanted it to do. And so God says, okay, let's have a timeout. So we're timing out right now. Go ahead, put into the comments, say I'm saying timeout. But here's the key, their God cannot save. And so this is what we're to do. And we're gonna do it right now in Yeshua's name, okay? It says, tell and bring forth your case. That's what we're gonna do. Father God, we come to you now and we go into uh, the court of mercy. Lord, we ask that you wash us, cleanse us with your blood in yes, that mercy Lord. court. Yes. Lord, we come to you as just judge. Yes, Father. Lord, heavenly Father, we need you to be just judge. And Lord, we're going to bring forth our case in the court of mercy. And we're asking for mercy for the United States of America. We're asking mercy for you and mercy for us and all that's under our control for our children, our grandchildren, our bank accounts, our, our food, our clothing, our shelter, and our cities and our states. We are asking in the mercy course, Lord, mercy as we bring forth our case in Yeshua's name. Amen. And so we're going to bring forth the case now. Okay. Tell and bring forth your case. Yes. Let them take counsel together. And my question is this, Lord, who has declared this from ancient of times? Who has declared the nation of Israel? Birthed in a day in 48. Who declared in June 7, 1967 at seven o'clock in the morning when the paratroopers went through the lionscape? Who proclaimed this? Who put it on the heart of president two years ago President Donald J. Trump to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, recognizing Jerusalem as the undivided capital. Who is this? Who caused this? Who caused this to recognize the high mountain of the Golan Heights as the sovereign mountain and the sovereign land of the Jewish people? Who, who put this on the heart of a Cyrus King, President Donald Trump? It was you, God. But who told us that this would happen? And it says, and there is no other God beside me, a just God and savior. There is none beside me. I will decree and declare that Allah and Buddha and all the other gods, they do not have a book that prophesied and said that these things would happen in the exact way that they have happened. The only God who has declared and it has happened exactly as it says in his book, is the just God. And he says here, a just God, a savior, and there is none besides me. So Father God, we come into your court of mercy right now, and we decree and declare in the court of mercy that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and whom we can approach because of the blood of Jesus, is the just God, he is the savior, and he is the sovereign God of the whole universe. Thank you, and your word says, because you are speaking to the, all the nations through fulfilling Bible prophecy, you say in verse 22, look to me and be saved all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess an oath. He shall yes. say, surely in the Lord I have righteousness yes. and strength. To him men shall come and all shall be ashamed who are incest against him. 
in the Lord all the descendants of Israel shall be justified and shall glory in Yeshua's name. And Father God, we decree and declare today in the court of mercy that Father God, you are the just God, you are the Savior, yes. you are Jehovah Jireh, yes. you are Jehovah yes. Rafi, yes. you are Jehovah Shalom. Yes. And we decree that in our lives, everything that is contrary to you shall bow its knee. Put it in the comments now, shall bow its knee. Yes. All shame, poverty, sickness, yes. disease, yes. confusion, doubt, yes. unbelief, pride. Yes. Bow your knee now, yes. now in, the in the name, name of Jesus, of sure. because we recognize the God who said and the God who delivered is the only God. There is none like you. As Moses said, Micha Mocha, there is none like you, O Lord. You are the only one and you are the holy God. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's, in Yeshua's, name. Yeshua's, name. In Yeshua's name. And your word says, Father God, in Isaiah. Lord. It says, Father God, it says in Isaiah 43 and 26. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted as your first fathers had sinned. And Father God, we put you into remembrance of your word in the mercy court as just judge. And Lord, we lift up the United States of America that is being overrun and is being vandalized, even being vandalized in Israel. Here's where Benjamin Netanyahu chose to honor Donald J. Trump on the Golan Heights with this beautiful sign that says the Trump Heights. And look what happened this week vandals came and literally destroyed where it says the Trump Heights in Hebrew and English. And you can see here that they tried to take down the flag really of the one new man, the Israel flag in the United States. They tried to peel it off, but they couldn't do it. Something disrupted their work. I believe it was prophetic. Amen. It's showing that God says it's time that the one new man, Jew and Gentile, rise up and we're gonna put God into remembrance of why Donald Trump honored this and why we have honored the United States and Donald Trump for recognizing it by putting our uh, peace grove in the Golan Heights. So we're going to put God into remembrance of the goodness. And I'm gonna record this, Lord, in your mercy courts and ask that it be recorded in your books and your record in Yeshua's name, if you would come in in agreement. Yes, Lord. There's 12 things I want to put God into remembrance of. And Christians should support the president because he supports Israel and he is also pro-life. Anybody who is pro-life and pro-Israel will bring a blessing to your nation. And you need to understand that Biden is not pro-life and he is not pro-Israel. He and and that will bring a curse. We need to protect this nation. Yes. We yes. need to vote for righteousness. Yes. But listen to these things, because we're gonna bring them collectively, release a blessing on the United States and release a blessing to you as you take action today. Number one, President Trump immediately after being president withdrew the disastrous Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPA, nuclear deal with Iran, president which protects Israel. President Trump imposes and con continues to impose and enforces and implements numerous U.S. sanctioned programs against Iran, which protects Israel and protects the nations around us and protects us. President Trump officially recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moves the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. President Trump signed, number four, the Taylor Act into law, named after the U.S. Army officer slain by the Palestinian terrorists while visiting Tel Aviv so that U.S. funds would not be used to pay terrorists and families of slain attacked to maim and murder Americans and Israelis. Five, President Trump officially proclaimed that the U.S. recognition of the Golan Heights, this strategy and sovereign part of the state of Israel. Those who controls the high mountains controls the land below. It is critical. And remember what we prayed when we started 
that we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and we also pray for the mountains surrounding Israel. Sixth, President Trump authorized defunding the anti-Semitic terror, uh, uh, terror enabler, UNWRA, and he closed the PLL, PLO office in Washington, D.C. Seventh, President Trump appointed the most pro-Israel U.S. ambassador to the United Nations in the history of the United Na Nations in the United States, Ambassador Nikki R. Haley, who is a voice of the Trump administration, forcefully opposed multi anti-Israel action taken in the UN. Praise the Lord. Eighth, President Trump continually calls, uh, calls out and refuses to bow to members of Congress who support anti-Semitic agendas of the BDS movement. Nine, President Trump signed an executive order to extend Title VI of the 1964 Civil Rights Act to protect Jewish students on college campuses from anti-Semitic attacks. 10th, President Trump became the first world leader to recognize Israel's sovereignty over Judea and Samaria, the mountains surrounding Jerusalem, legally under international law. 11, President Trump unconditionally affirmed Israel's absolute right to self-defense, praise the Lord. And 12th, President Trump proclaimed on May the 20th, on, on, in May 2020, as a Jewish American Heritage Month, calling upon Americans to celebrate and observe the heritage and the contribution of American Jews. He is not a racist. He is not only pro-Israel, he's pro-life. He's pro all colors. He's pro all Americans. And we need to be able to say and release honor to him. Because you see, honor is the currency of heaven. Right now, in our peace grove in Israel, you have an opportunity. And the opportunity, and I, and I want to close this opportunity by this weekend. It's Thursday. And here's my challenge. I need your help. We have five mature trees and we just have five left. These mature trees are available for sponsorship, sponsoring five different states. I need you to go to this webpage and if you're capable, adopt and sponsor one of the states, even if it's not your state. We only have five left. We have 85 smaller trees that need to be sponsored, 85. All of you can participate in that. You all have the resources to be able to go to israelmot.com forward slash Trump. Now, this weekend, we need to have this finished. Why is it? I have an urgency in my heart that we need to quickly get the lambskin stretched between a beautiful frame of iron and copper olive branches that will be done by a most famous artist in Israel. His name is Sam Philippe. Many of the statues and many of the uh, beautiful architectural um, pieces that are in Israel in strategic spots have been uh, produced by this artist, Sam Philippe. Sam Philippe is going to make a frame and stretch this lambskin. And we're going to have an expert that does calligraphy put all 500 names on this lambskin and all 50 names of the sponsors of the mature trees with a blessing in Hebrew written on this lambskin, honoring you and honoring the president and honoring his family, saying to them, thank you so much. Thank you for blessing Israel, not only in these 12 ways, but thank you so much. And uh, 
I need you to be able to do this now. And I know many of you sow seeds and, and into, into Kurt Landry Ministries and you donate, and I thank you so much. But I have urgency in my heart. My dear friend, Mike Lindell, from my pillow, and I have partnered on this project. We both feel an urgency to finish this project now. And we want to be able to get this framed piece to the president, which will be hand delivered by Mike Lindell and others. And it will be delivered in the White House in a formal presentation to the Trump family and their administration. I think we need to be out of the root of Jesse in thanksgiving to the Lord for saving us. I think we need to be the banners. I think that this sign becomes a banner. I think this beautifully framed lambskin that from the lamb that's been grafted in, we say, thank you, Lord. I also think that we need to be able to say, Lord, we're doing what the scripture says. And when the scripture says, as the mountains, that it says, for those who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abide forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds the people from this time forth and forevermore. And Father God, as we sow our seed into the sponsorship of these 85 small trees and these five big trees, Lord, we decree and declare in the courts that this prophetic act that we're doing right now, this prophetic act right now, do not hesitate. You need to do this today. As we do this prophetic act, Father God, we ask in Jesus' name, we touch and agree that Lord, that the scepter of wickedness that rests upon Israel's land and rests upon our land, that land has been allotted to the righteous. Yes. And Lord, if we try to remove this ourselves, your word says, lest the righteous reach out their hands at, to their iniquity. Father God, your command isn't for us to go out and battle the Antifa and, and, these, and, and these Marxist movements that are trying to steal the liberty from our nation and those who are trying to destroy the nation of Israel and destroy Judea and Samaria. It, Lord, you're not calling us to take up arms. You're saying to us, do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their heart. As much as they have turned aside their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them away from the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel. Father God, we speak that peace over Israel now. And in this peace yes. grove in the Golan Heights, yes. we agree with the 12 things, Lord, that Donald J. Trump, our president, my president, has done to bless Israel and to bless the nation of Israel yes. and to bless the Jewish people, thus blessing the United States. Yes. It is no accident that the economy that got destroyed by this COVID attack that destroyed the strongest, fastest growing financial government and financial uh, economy in the history of the world, it will come back Amen. and it will come back stronger. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we sow a seed of these trees now. Yes. Lord, we hear the clarion call. We want our name on the lambskin. We want to be recognized, Lord, in the courts of heaven, in the mercy court. And we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Lord, we decree that we may prosper who love you. We may have peace within the walls of our home and our nation. And we may have prosperity within our palaces. And we say for our brethren's sake and companions, Lord, we say to them, shalom, shalom within your walls. And we say, bless the house of the Lord God. And for our brethren's sake, bless Israel. See, it's one thing to pray and bless, but it's time to take action. So I need you to go right now. I need you to go to Israel mot.com forward slash Trump by this weekend let's get 85 trees thousands of you are watching we need 85 trees if you're watching this on the archive let's get this project finished by this Sunday let's get the five mature trees done 
let's activate this prayer. Amen? Let's not look at all this good. You can say, you know what? I, I don't like the way President Trump talks to this person. I don't like the way he interacts with that. I don't like... Let's look at the facts. Here's the facts. No one has done as much for Israel in three and a half years. No president, even in a two-year term, has ever brought this many blessings. We activate the blessings from this into your life and into our nation, but you need to take action. You need to sow a seed, and you can see the enemy's got it on the radar because he's trying to remove Trump Heights from the mountains surrounding Jerusalem. We say no. They're repairing this sign, and we are planting our trees. It's time for us to plant our trees. It's time for us to battle in the opposite spirit. So I'm asking you, many of you are donating to CLM and we thank you for it, but I'm asking you to sow your seed into IsraelMOT.com as a spiritual warfare, battling in the opposite spirit. Plant that tree, claim your blessings and say, Lord, I am in alignment with you. And now Christy's gonna close out this time together as we take communion. If you would get your Kiddush cup, she's gonna bless the, uh, the bread and bless the wine. We're gonna take communion together and we're going to seal this blessing for the United States of America. And I can, all I can say to you is from inside sources, I need to finish this project this week. Let me get my uh, blessing, be right back. I want you to agree with us that we can get this finished this weekend and we can commission uh, Sam Philippe, who is the famous artist in Israel, but he's also the director of operation of Kurt Landry Ministries. And we need to get this project finished. We need to get it shipped from Israel with all of our names on it. And we need to get it to Mike Lindell and the team that will be taking it in. And we need this presentation and we need to pray that this story and these nine things are highlighted. We need our friends who are influencers, which are many, and they will all carry this story of what you've done. I believe one of the reasons during Tish B'Av, this is so strong in my heart, is I believe that Donald Trump himself needs the encouragement to keep standing with Israel. Because it's hard, you know, you've been standing with Israel, and sometimes you just need a pat on the back and say, you know what, well done. We really appreciate you. I think he doesn't even know about this grove yet, unless someone has, has told him, but I don't think so. This is gonna come as a surprise gift. Some of his family knows, but we're thanking them for leaving their billionaire lifestyle and coming without pay, working 20 hours a week without pay to save this nation. More than 20 hours a week. I mean, not 20 hours a week, 20 hours a day. About. That's what they say, 20 yeah. hours a day. He says yeah. sleep he four hours. He doesn't sleep very much. Yeah. And, uh, but we feel urgency to do this. So let's do this and let's, let's seal these blessings. Chrissy's going to seal these blessings for us because you've now battled in the opposite spirit. You're going to have peace within your palaces. You're going to have prosperity break forth. You do the small thing and let the covenant God that says in numbers, for I am not a God, I am not a man that I should lie. He's going to bless you because you've blessed them. Amen. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanksgiving, Lord. We thank you for everything that Rabbi spoke out, Lord, so that the people would have hearts of understanding. So when they take the elements this evening, Lord, that they will take it into them deep, that when we plant those olive trees in the grove, we are planting a, a tree that stands for peace. 
And, and that is what is being planted into the earth, peace and unity, nothing missing, nothing broken, destiny fulfilled. And that only comes through the blood and the sacrifice of the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So, Father, we, we, take this, we take this bread, Lord. Thank you. Sorry, I'll give me the bigger piece. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we take we, we take this and we say Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Hamoz Lahim Man Haaretz Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And we take with praise and thanksgiving that this bread was broken for us. Every sin, every transgression, every iniquity every curse from generations past. This bread was broken for us. And so we receive it this evening, Lord, with praise and thanksgiving for all you have done, all that you are, your beautiful character, your beautiful nature of love being passed into us as we take. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Do the wine, but me too. I'll do this. Okay. Elohenu Melech Alam Bore Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. Lord, we seal this peace in our families. Yes, Lord. And on behalf of Israel, I thank you. Yes. And I know even Prime Minister Netanyahu is going through a very difficult time. He will be thankful that yes, we finish Lord. this project. Yes, he does Lord. know about it. Yes, thank you. And Lord. Lord, there will be a day when we do a ribbon cutting soon as we can get there when this we rebuke this COVID spirit off the nation of Israel the and off spirit and this lying mm. spirits. And Lord, we just break it in Yeshua's name. Yes, in Yeshua's and we break name. it off our nation. Yes. And Lord, we seal it with this cup and we apply yes, the blood of Jesus over all of yes, Israel and Lord. all the United States. Yes. And Lord, we thank you that we look to this cup and this covenant alone for you are a covenant keeping God. Yes, thank you. Thank Lord. you, Lord, for sealing the peace in our life, yes. sealing the peace in your yes, life. Yes. And Lord, we thank you that your word says in Amos 9 11, that is, we plant literally trees in Israel and we plant the vineyards in, the, in Israel that it's a decree that they shall not be uprooted from their land. Amen. I thank you, Lord, Amen. that we shall not be uprooted thank from you, our land as we sow into their land. Yes, Israel Lord. will not be uprooted and neither will the United States of America. We will not be overthrown by any anarchy you, in Yeshua's name. God bless America and God yes. bless Israel. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for praying. Thank you for planting trees today. Yes. Thank you so much. And if this is in the archive, thank you so much. If we go over the amount of trees, uh, we have other uh, other places, other that orchards planting. that we're planting mm -hmm. that are very important as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's get these 85 done and the five. Thank you so much and an early Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Lord. Shalom.